Hi there, in this video I will show you how to use test-driven development approach with Angular. So there are only three steps in TDD. First, you write the test and it should fail. Then you make this test pass with the most straightforward and easiest solution you can come up with. The approach that allows you to make that test pass as quickly as possible. And lastly, you refactor your solution into something more robust while keeping the test passing. Now let's get started. At this point I have set up an empty Angular application. So let's imagine that this will be a to-do style application where you will be able to view existing to-dos and add new ones. To demonstrate how I use test-driven development, I will build a feature that will list existing to-dos. Let's start by generating a to-do list component using command line. I'll put it in the components folder and call it to-do list. Then I start the test runner that should show all tests passing. Now on to the very first step of test-driven development, which is to add a first failing test. I navigate to the test file of the to-do list component. I rename this default test to describe my first real test, which is to list existing to-dos. Should list to do's or rather should show to do's. Then I modify this existing expect statement to assert that the component shows a number of expected to do's. We use native element of the fixture object to query the rendered HTML of the component to search for the elements that we expect to be present, which is to do's. So we use the query selector all method. And we search by the class name a to do. And then we look at the length of the returned array and we expect the, the length to be, let's say, three to-dos. And that's our first test. Since I've written it using test-driven development, there's no code behind it to make it pass. So if we look into the console, we should see our first test failure. And in fact, it does fail, saying, that in our assertion we expected there to be three to-dos or rather three elements with the class to-do but we got zero. And as I mentioned there are only three steps in test-driven development and I've just completed the first one which is writing the first test. The next step is to make that test pass with the most straightforward simplest solution. So let's open the template file of the component and see how we can make it pass. So the simplest solution will be to just list all the to-dos here in template directly. And don't forget to add the class by which the test is asserting that the to-dos are present in the template as three of them. And these are our three to-dos. So let's look at the test. And it is passing. And now I have just completed the second step in test-driven development, 
which is to make the test pass. The third and the last step is to refactor your current solution to something more robust while keeping the test passing. So let's go back to the editor. In reality, that's not how web applications work. The list of existing to-dos will likely come from some kind of API service from the backend, which will require making an HTTP call. And in Angular, HTTP calls are delegated to services. Therefore, the to-do list component should use some kind of service to fetch these to-dos. So let's add a service using the command line. Open it in another tab, navigate to the application, then generate the service, put it in the services directory, then inject the service into the component. Once the component has the service to fetch the two dos, we can put it in the onInit method where the component would ask the service for the two dos and save them into a class property. So first of all, let's declare that property here and call it two dos. We'll default it to an empty array for now and then use that property to save the to dos by calling the service. It's highlighted because the method doesn't exist in the service yet, so let's go into the service and add that method. It will return an empty array for now. So at this point I'm not worried about how the service will fetch these to-dos exactly. That's not my concern. I will mock this method during the test so I don't really care what's happening here during not the test run but during real execution. Now back to the component template. To display the list of existing to-dos saved in the class property the template needs to iterate over the list using the ng4 directive. Like so. Make sure that the class property is still present because that's how the test is asserting the presence of the elements in the template. Now let's check the test. And now we see that it is failing. Oh, it's actually failing because of the parsing error. Oh, this should be of. And then check the test again. And now it is failing with an appropriate message saying that the assertion expects there to be three to-dos but we only have zero. We have none. That's because in the controller of the template we are getting the list of to-dos from the get to-dos method of the service. And if we look inside of it, it returns an empty array so when we go into the template, it iterates over an empty array and doesn't produce any of the to-dos, that's why the test is failing. To simulate the scenario required for my test where the service returns three to-dos, I need to mock the return of the getToDos method of the service. So let's go to the test and first Add a variable where I will store the reference to the service where I'm going to mock it. Then 
Grab the reference from the test bed. Then we'll use the Jasmine spy on function to spy on the get to do's method of the service and then have it return our expected three to do's. Make sure that the detect changes call happens after we set our spy. Now let's check the test. And it is passing. It is passing because we spied on the get to do's method and told it to return an array of these three to do's. And during the component execution, that's in fact what happened. The, the to do's got saved into this to do's property, which was used in the template to iterate over and create the list of to do's. At this point, I've completed all three steps of test driven development. I added a failing test, I implemented the simplest solution, and then I refactored it. As you might have guessed, this is just the beginning. I still need to implement the HTTP calling logic in the service method before I can test that the whole thing works correctly. To do that, I would start a new cycle of test-driven development. I would go into the test of the service and uh, create a new test where I would assert that when I call the get to do's method, it properly uses the HTTP service to call a certain URL and then returns the data in the expected format. To save time, I won't do it in this video. Instead, I just hard code some random values in the return so that I can test this in the browser. And when I open the browser, I see that it works. Notice how this is the first time I opened the browser so far. When you stick to TDD, it is not uncommon to build large chunks of functionality and only then open the browser and check that everything works and do some small adjustments. I don't even bother with any of the styling before I get the functionality right. Only then I start adding styling classes, CSS tweaks, grid layout, and so on. In this sense, test-driven development allows me to focus on the most important thing from the get-go, which is good user experience, and not getting distracted by irrelevant things such as how to fetch or store data uh, in the backend or what shade of blue this button should be. Another benefit of TDD is that there are only three steps, so when I return to my coding, I always know where I left and what to do next. Next benefit is that TDD makes it easier to create a better architecture because it constrains me to write only the code that's absolutely necessary to pass the tests and no more. It also helps me to see where to start breaking things down into more components or services or where to use state management. Next, when you write the tests in the way that describes the desired behavior of the component, it creates a living, executable documentation for your code. So instead of figuring out the inner workings of a component or a service, you can just glance at the tests and get a quick idea of what it does and how it works. Next, when you have tests that assert against the expected behavior of components, it is so much easier to refactor them. For example, as long as my test for listing to do's is passing, I can completely refactor the way those to do's are fetched, prepared, or filtered for the display, and still feel confident that everything works correctly. Lastly, writing tests first 
makes better tests in general. If tests are written after the code, it is too easy to miss some important functionality. Additionally, the tests that are written after the code often assert against the implementation, not against the expected behavior. So these tests are harder to understand. Also, they break as soon as you change some implementation detail in your code, even when it's not related to the expected behavior. And because of these reasons, I prefer to use test-driven development for all my coding. Thank you for watching this and I'll see you next time.